Well, good evening, my fellow little gamers. Oh, are we ready? Are we ready to enact Project 2025? It's time to put women in breeding camps. How are you doing this evening, Chad? Are you ready? Are you ready to take away the reproductive rights? Oh, no more abortions for anybody. You're all going into camps. You're all going to get bread. We're going to use all the tax dollars. All the tax dollars to give every man in the country Viagra. And then it's nothing but rape. Non-stop rape. Project 2025 is here. Donald Trump is ushering in the age of <laughs> non-consensual sex. Government mandated. The federal government is going to ensure that everybody is bred. I'm going to get new girlfriends. You're going to get new girlfriends and tons of free Viagra. That's how based. Based. That's the whole election. That's what we've been voting for. At least that's what the mainstream media has told me. Maybe I'm wrong on this. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm confused a little bit. Well, it's that magical night, isn't it? It's a night where half the country's going to break down and shit itself in rage. Once the polls are done, once the voting's over, half the country's going to be convinced that the end of the world is here. The other half is going to be smug as fuck about it, saying terrible, terrible things and just being insufferable pricks. And we are all about that. Remember, it's not so much important who you voted for tonight. What's important is that you're an asshole to the people that lose. <laughs> that you screen cap it and mine the fuck out of that salt. Now, I've got my team. I've already already explained who I'm voting for. I'm a right-leaning guy. I'm going for Trump. He got shot twice. Well, shot at twice. A little sniper on the golf course. Don't forget that one. But I can respect it. If we lose tonight, you know the country's going to go to shit, obviously. But I can't take away that victory from those Kamala folks, you left-leaning people, if you're listening to this. You get to be smug fucks about it, screen-capping all the megapedes that are shitting themselves in rage. And likewise, if Trump wins it, oh, are the libs going to shit themselves. And I am all of I want to see which way it goes, which way is it going to go. Now, we have some polling data that's already come in. We've already got some states are being called. Oh, I've been watching this take place ever since yesterday. Very interesting. All these polls suddenly saying that Kamala's taking it. Oh, Poly Market. Have you seen Poly Market? All the betting by foreigners? Oh, oh, go to Poly Market and look what's going on. Like to remind you all, Mark Cuban owns like a large investment in Poly Market, and he hates Trump. So if you're voting there, <laughs> I'm sorry, if you're if you're betting on Poly Market, remember you're make market you're making Mark Cuban money. He's making money off of you. Don't forget that. <laughs> Go vote so, Go vote with your wallet and place your bets somewhere else. Let's not make Mark Cuban money. He's just an asshat. <laughs> now, I will try to do this for a little while. I've been having so much fun watching it. It's, you know, watching people react, especially on social media when they're talking about this election. It really seems like it comes down to two issues. I'm going to try to call it as fair as I can. You look at right-leaning people when they're talking about which way do they think the election is going to go, which way do they think, you know, what are the issues that are at play here? You hear a lot of talk about the economy, not being able to make rent, not being able to buy groceries. Things are way too expensive. Worried about the jobs, worried about their security and their future, worried about mass immigration. These are the issues I see presented on the right. Then on the left side, those left-wing people, what are they talking about? What's the big issue? Vaginas. Abortion. we got to talk about my vagina, my, my abortion rights. Seems to be the biggest thing. There are even a few people dressing up like a handmaid's tail and going out to voting centers. Can I just say, please don't. Like, I get it. It's election day. Everybody wants to be a little goofy. People are putting on their political attire. They're going to dress up. They're going to have stickers and look like walking fucking billboards. I get it. Left and right, that's fine. But don't be that person. Don't be the person that is just the mood killer. I'm talking about like the fat 40-year-old white suburban mom that's drunk, really drunk off wine has cat hair all over, her, and is dressed up like a hand's made tail. Let's not do that. Nobody likes it. Not even your fellow left-wingers like it. You are an insufferable prick, and everybody hates it. Please stop doing that. I know you have one piece of fiction left to you. You can't dress up like fucking Harry Potter and run around waving a wand screaming about Voldemort. Because, oh no, J.K. Rowling doesn't like trans people or some shit, so that that piece of fiction is now restricted. It doesn't It doesn't exist anymore. We can't. We can't like that anymore. Find something fucking new, okay? Please, am I am I fucking wrong on this? Can we? Can you find something new? If this is your mother that's going out to the voting center dressed like that, stop her, lock the front door, don't let her leave. 
Take a picture of her and show it to her and be like, Mom, this is fucking embarrassing. Stop. People are going to look at this like 10 years from now and you're never going to live it down. Stop. I get it. My vagina abortions. I understand. You're too old to get fucked anyway, but I understand. Abortions are a big issue for you. Stop dressing up like this. The neighbors are talking. You're scaring the cat. The cat doesn't understand what this outfit is. Stop it. But, uh, you know. <laughs> I don't, They're like, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it's depressing for them. No more Harry Potter. Maybe they could dress up like um, Rings of Power. Isn't there like a fat hairy dwarf in that or something? Or a midget elf? I don't fucking, I don't really follow this shit. There's a black, what is it, black dwarf female in that? You go, Mom, dress up like that. Get her a battle axe. Have her scare the people at the polling center. Go out there, Mom, with your battle axe and talk about the one ring or some shit. I don't I don't know. Just not a hands made tale. Let's let's fucking bury that. Give me back the give me back the curtains. You need to stop. So this has been going on back and forth. Oh, which way is it gonna go? I don't listen, the polling's all over the fucking place. I have my gut feeling. I locked it in two days ago. I think Trump's gonna take it. If he loses, I gotta I'm gonna have egg on my face. Oh boy, that's gonna be embarrassing. But we have a lot. I mean, we've got results that have already come in. So let's try to get current with it while we do this. This is going to be a bit of a shorter stream. Other people are doing longer ones. I saw people in chat talking earlier saying Crowder is doing one. I think he's got like half a million people watching. He's got Tim Pool on there. The Quarter Pounder is on there. So you've got like, you know, they're going to be selling lots of coffee and talking about Civil War. So you'll have that to watch. And then over at Kick on the Kino Casino Gaming, you've got Andy and uh, PPP and they've got Josh joining them, DSP and a bunch of other people. So there'll be a lot of long-form streams tonight. People are going to cover a lot of stuff. I'm just going to be here for a little while, health permitting. We'll take a look and kind of see which way it's going to go. Oh, talk about the political issues. Get all political about it while we look at the returns. Oh, that should be interesting. Who doesn't love politics? God, I can't wait for this to be over. (laughs) I either want to know that we have a little bit of hope coming or that I'm going to be living my last days in a dystopia. But let's just get it over with. So let me put up a little pretty... Oh, look at those two. Oh, yeah, I guess I can get rid of the pudding. <laughs> I'll get rid of the pudding. There we go. So let's see what we've got so far. Let me pull up some results. Oh, boy. Breaking news. Da, da, I don't have, like, a ticker. I don't have a ticker yet. Can I put this up on screen? Maybe... Well, you know what? I'll just read the results. We'll go through the results a little bit. And then I'll show them on screen if they get interesting. Right now, as it stands, and I'm looking at Google and the New York Times... Those are the two places I'm going to pull from. And then we'll read on Twitter as people come to terms with whatever the reality of tonight's going to be. Fair enough? Fair enough. Presidential results. Where are we sitting right now? Well, Donald Trump is currently sitting with a popular vote of 11.5 million, while Kamala has 9.7. Now, again, we're very early in the evening. Can't base anything really off this. This is just kind of early days. But what about electoral votes? Where are we sitting with those? Donald Trump sitting at 95 electoral votes. Kamala Harris at 35. Uh Uh-oh. But then again, I mean, we're expecting the states that we're seeing to go to these people already. What do we got? Well, we've got uh, Donald already having these confirmed. These are being called for him. So Indiana, West Virginia, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, South Carolina, and Florida, Oklahoma. States that are leaning right now towards Donald would be Kansas, Texas, and Georgia. I would be shocked if Texas didn't go to him. It's the same with, well, Georgia, to be honest. Now, for K- Kamala, looks like we have Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, Maryland, and Vermont are currently being called for her, with New Hampshire and New Jersey leaning towards her, along with Michigan, Ohio, Virginia, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania. Now, I know Pennsylvania is that toss-up state, and we only have 5% reporting, so don't, don't really think this is going one way or the other yet. For Pennsylvania with a 5% reporting, it's like 300,000 votes. So then let's take a look at North Carolina here. Maybe 400,000, 8% coming in from North Carolina. Now, if I were more politically inclined, if I were more tuned into this shit, I could be like, well, obviously this is the way it's going to go for this evening. These are the counties that are voting for them. I don't have that much in-depth information. What's going on with our Senate and House race right now? Right now in the Senate, looks like the Republicans have gained a seat while the Dems have lost one. And in the House, right now it's just 39 seats for the GOP and 21 for the Dems. I don't know what's going on with the governorships. Take a look at that in a little bit. 
but these are early days numbers. Let me see if I could refresh New York Times, see if we can get some more information. Yeah, see, New York Times isn't even giving us like specific leaning towards anything. They're just giving what they're calling, nothing else. So right now, they're just locked solid into 95 electoral votes for Donald and 35 for Kamala. Now, I'm going to be honest with my assessment like, as we kind of get into the evening of, of what I think of both candidates. And I think there was a bit of a bellwether moment and a real, uh, you know, shift and kind of the PR and the interaction and just, I guess, the overall feel of the campaign for Donald after that assassination attempt. It feels like everything sort of shifted for him, not just in his reaction to it, but in how he interacted with voters. It, feel, it felt more savvy. It felt like he took more opportunities to try to connect in different ways, whether that was going on streaming stuff and podcast stuff, uh, being a bit more relaxed, having a lot of really big rallies, speaking a little bit differently than he usually does. So I don't know if that can be attributed to his reaction to getting shot at, if that is he had a better team of people around him, if that was taking more advice from his family, because everybody's always memeing that it's Barron that's helping him out. But to me, it felt like he was more on the ball, especially during this uh, you know, election cycle, especially after what happened. Whereas Kamala, I don't I can't specifically recall something that she did. And I know that sounds weird. I know she did rallies. But as far as like being PR savvy or taking advantage of a situation, it felt like a lot of fumbles and missed opportunities. Even a running mate with walls trying to, you know, uh, do this campaign against Vance where he said, oh, he's weird. You know, that was their big attack. Vance is weird. Didn't really last very long, though, did it? Soon the conversation about walls became, you know, stolen valor, lying about going to China, uh, banging a, a communist agent. You know, all this stuff kind of backfired on him. And he kind of sunk into the background. Like the two main events I remember from him are he tried to do a hunting thing and he played some video games once. You know, once those PR photo ops were out of the way, that was it. As far as Kamala goes, I honest to God can't remember what the hell she did for the last two months. It just felt like she did nothing. It felt like she took advantage of nothing, even though she was in the news cycle, even though that, you know, they're always pushing her and pushing her. It was more, what embarrassments were going on? What, what fumbles did she make? How did she screw up? Was the teleprompter not working? Did she misspeak again? Did she sound like she was drunk? Was she using a new accent? You know, I know she did SNL, okay. But, I mean, aside from that, what the fuck were they doing? You know, and it's easy to look at the team that surrounds these people and say, oh, well, she must have bad people advising her. Both of their campaigns are spending millions and millions of dollars to have people advise them on the best possible way to approach voters, on the best possible way to get their message out there. They're going to have people that are diehard fanatics and zealots and have the same ideology and they're going to hire people with different opinions and they're going to try to come up with a middle ground strategy to reach the most people and to me it felt like trump was way more on the ball whereas kamala was just i don't know what the fuck that campaign was i think the democrats got way too arrogant and thought they could just pick somebody and have the machine of the dnc push them forward and it didn't matter who they were they were going to win and that was that and I think they massively dropped the ball by not having people vote for who they wanted, by saying that she's handpicked and you've got to accept it, by uh, putting her out there when she obviously just doesn't know what the hell she's doing. It's not so much that Kamala Harris is the Democratic nominee, that she is, it's more so that she just happens to be the placeholder for opposition to Donald Trump. I mean, that's how, that's how cardboard cutout and non-personable she is is i you know you don't really know much about her she doesn't really seem to have much of anything going on she's just sort of there if you don't like donald trump that's who kamala harris is that's what her campaign has been that's what it felt like the entire time and i will be honest to god fucking shocked if she wins tonight now i could be wrong I could be completely wrong. She may take it. Whether you want to say they stole it or she won it, doesn't even matter. But I would be shocked if she wins. It just does not feel to me like she has support that's real. It does not feel to me like she has a mass of people behind her that are willing to do anything to vote her into office. 
she just does not have that appeal, even to her voters. A lot of people like to look at like um, Hillary Clinton. Remember when, when Trump ran in 2016? And they like to say, oh, she was so unlikable. And uh, what a terrible choice. It should have been Bernie. You know, all these other things. But you have to give it to Hillary that she understood how politics works. She understood, even with her faux pas and her fuck-ups and her mistakes, all those foibles, all that stuff, she still understood what the game of politics was. Kamala Harris does not. There have been numerous opportunities and events that have happened over the last two to three months where I have thought to myself, you know, if Hillary was the candidate right now, or if Sanders was a candidate right now, or if anybody else other than Kamala Harris was the candidate right now, they would have taken advantage of it better. They would have reacted better. They would have seized the moment better. But she constantly is fumbling and fucking up and not bringing that football in to, to get a touchdown. <laughs> so my assessment as we start out the night, because I'm going to lay it out there. Like I said, if I'm wrong, oh boy, egg on my face. Is that Trump is going to take it? How much he takes it by, I couldn't tell you. I wouldn't be surprised if it's well over 300 electoral votes. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a bit of a sweep. Not going to be something like Reagan, don't get me wrong, but I don't think uh, I don't think Kamala is going to win. And I think we all need to come to the conclusion too. Big important point here: if if uh, Kamala loses this one, <laughs> you can't ever pick somebody from Minnesota for anything. All right, the Mondale shit was embarrassing enough. You know, now we got walls on here. Let's never have a politician from Minnesota ever run for anything related to re- you know president or vice president from this day forward, because <laughs> it's a fucking curse. It's a curse doesn't matter what political party you're a part of don't do it it's a mistake you don't want to do it just gonna just gonna say that i'm just gonna put that out there for you right now (laughs) it's a terrible mistake don't do it you don't want to do that so chat i'm gonna have to ask you which way you honestly i'll do a poll we'll do a poll to see which way you honestly think this is gonna go because i'm gonna be straight up with you i don't see kamala taking it But I'll, I'll, I'll put them both down. We'll see which way. We'll see which way uh, the chat's gonna go on this. Throw that up there for you. There we go. Now I'm gonna guess the main demographic that are watching me, even though I mostly talk about insane people on the internet. But I lean right. So I'm gonna guess you're mostly right wingers. But I'm sure there's some left wing people out there that are watching this, or independents, or undecided. Uh, not meaning to scare you off. But I, I, I can't imagine that you would disagree with me too harshly on this, that Kamala was a fucking awful choice. And that in the end, this is going to hurt the Democrats. Not saying having Biden in there was a good one. You know, I'm going to be honest with you. I think uh, Biden is just checked out. He's completely gone. I think he's been checked out for quite some time. You know, who you pick as a replacement, I don't know. But holy shit, it should have been somebody other than Harris. Let's see what our, let's see what our voting is coming up with here. Oops, no, I don't want to end the poll. That's not what we're looking to do. We'll let it go for a little while. So who's going to win it right now in the chat? Everybody putting down their bets early on this evening. We've got 83% so far of the 3,500 voting saying that that Trump is going to take it. 17% going with Kamala. So I don't know. I don't know which way. So far, it's not looking good. Is this going to be reflected nationally? Probably not. Is it going to be much closer? Probably we're just going to have to wait and wonder and watch. Oh, boy. It's election day. Isn't it exciting? <laughs> oh, I can't wait for the mad. Let's see if we got any updates. Well, so far, popular vote only. Really nothing else going so far. But 14.5 million going to Trump for the popular vote. 11.8 going to Kamala. Now, I don't know what's happened so far to Joe Biden's 80 bajillion Americans that love him to death. I would have thought Kamala would already have, you know, 482 million votes. <laughs> 140% of the country's population. I thought she'd already be there. Donald Trump would have one or two. Please, please, may I have, he says, little tin cans out. May I have another vote? Because Biden's just so wildly popular. Even though the headline from a few hours ago is Biden has snubbed Kamala, not even going to her election party. It's not looking good. Now, you could just say that Biden is an old man. He's very tight, very sleepy, sleepy Joe. He's just kind of he's just kind of hanging out, you know, having an ice cream, sitting in his rocking chair, forgetting that he's president. Maybe they wheel Carter next to him. It's like a double a double header, a double feature, two weekend at Bernie's for free. 
They just can't make it right now. Can't hang out with Kamala. Oh, do we have any information about what's going on so far? Let's see. Yep, the race in both Virginia and North Carolina are still very fucking close. Just a few 10,000, 20,000 apart. Pennsylvania still got a bit of a gap, but only 8% reporting in. Michigan, still early days in Michigan with only 4% reporting in. Illinois is 1% reporting in. Ohio, yeah, Ohio is actually pretty close. 38% reporting in. Kamala Harris in the lead right now by only 10 or 14,000 votes at 1,144,000. To Donald Trump's 130,000. Kansas, only 7% reporting in, a few thousand apart, very early in the evening. But nothing is really changing very much. Texas is pretty locked in right now. Georgia is pretty locked in. Missouri, 1% reporting. Not even really worth talking. Only like 12,000 people have voted so far in the state. Not a lot to go by. Anything in the Senate or the House still sitting there. Oh, we had the calling Vermont. Oh, Bernie Sanders. What a shock. Bernie Sanders, 34% reporting in. Uh, looks like that's a definitive victory over Gerald Malloy. Is that how you said? I don't know. I don't really follow the Senate of the House races. I'm going to be honest with you. House right now sitting at GOP 44 to Dems 25. Will there be any shockers? I don't know. But do we have ballot measures this year? Was it just marijuana and vaginas? That was our. Were those our ballot measures, chat? I'm not sure. It's an interesting mix. <laughs> vaginas and pot. We'll see where it goes. Speaking of chat, who's going to win it with 5,700 votes so far in chat? 83% still for Donald Trump, 17 for Kamala. Still early days in the chat for the voting. I'll let it go for another few minutes. We'll see where it goes. I'm going to guess most of you are right-leaning. Now, we say we have a concurrent view count, which I don't believe. <laughs> if you look at, it reminds me of the vote from 2020. It's just a up and then straight over. Something fishy's going on. I don't know. I need to verify if that number is real. Could all 42,000 of you watching donate $1 just so I can maintain? We need to check that number. I need a fact checker. Somebody get CNN. Get the Washington Post over here. USA Today. Pretty sure USA Today is the one that did the fact checking where they said that Ben Shapiro did not, in fact, steal AOC's shoes so he could sniff them because he's a pervert. <laughs> How'd you like to have that job? How'd you like to be the guy at USA Today that has to verify shit posts on the internet? Somebody had to go out and research if Ben Shapiro actually stole a female a female politician's shoes. <laughs> and they took it so seriously. They even verified uh, the picture of, uh, the edited picture of Biden putting a gun in somebody's mouth. Like, anybody would be confused about that. Like, they'd be like, oh, you know what? Yeah, hey, geez, I don't think, um, I don't think that happened. And yet somebody's getting paid to write that shit. So I need a USA Today employee, one of their journalists, one of the top men or women to come out and uh, to double check that for me. It's very fucking important, I think. That's right. They did call him Sniffy Shapiro Chat. That's his nickname. 6,500 votes. Still sitting at 83. Trump, 17. Kamala, I'll tell you what. Boy, if Kamala wins it, we're all going to look like assholes. It's going to be a little embarrassing. But hey, you got to live with it. It's part of being an adult. You take those risks. Now, there'll be real updates every hour, and I plan to stream for, let's say, two hours tonight, so I'll be able to give you one firm update by 8, and a weaker update by 9, 9-ish, as I leave. But I don't think by that time we're going to have a definitive answer either way. So, you know, I'm just going to have to, you're going to have to turn in to uh, Kino Casino, or to, uh, what was the other one? I've already forgotten his name, Mug Club Guy. Mug Club guy. To hear Tim Pool talk about Civil War. Trump wins it, Civil War. Trump doesn't win it, Civil War. But at least I'll have plenty of coffee to get your way through. Looks like Harris is starting to pull up on those uh, popular votes. Don's still sitting at 15.8 million. Harris now closing the gap a little bit, th sitting at 13.3. I guess all those Biden voters finally woke up, got out of the old age home, and have decided to start voting. Oh, do we have something else that's saying that Illinois is now leaning towards Harris? A lot of leaning one direction or the other. But I don't know. We've got North Dakota up here. Looks like it's leaning towards Trump. I don't think that was a surprise. What I'm most interested in is North Carolina. And that gap is still extraordinarily close. Now, call me a bit of a conspiracy nut. But, you know, after those natural disasters that were going on on the, uh, the East Coast and seemingly the lack of 
rescue efforts and getting people's electricity restored and communication restored and getting food and water to people and sending away charities that were coming down there, whether they were church or the Red Cross or different uh, citizen-led um, initiatives. Seems like that state got its ass smacked and a lot of people were left high and dry. You know, and I know I've seen a lot of political people saying, oh, they think it's definitely going to go blue. It's going to go Kamala. That makes me a little paranoid. Makes me a little paranoid some shenanigans were going on. But who am I to say? I'm not a soothsayer. I couldn't uh, I couldn't tell you. What I am interested in is, what are we going to get more updates and information on the House and the Senate? What are they saying? Which ones do they gain and which ones did they lose? No, please, don't give me specific information. That would help. That, that would help. Uh, we'll go through the Senate. We'll look at the Senate right now. They're calling it in West Virginia for Jim Justice. Fantastic name, by the way. Indiana for Jim Banks. These are Republican candidates right now. Uh, Marsha Black in Tennessee. Roger Wicker in Mississippi. And Rick Scott in Florida for the uh, the Dems. They're calling it for Lisa Blunt in Delaware with 0% reporting. That's shocking. 0% reporting. Already wanted. Good job, Lisa. Apparently smoked everybody up. New Jersey, Andy Kim is taking it for the Democrats. Connecticut, we've got Chris Murphy taking it. Rhode Island, a Democrat. Sheldon uh, Whitmore? Or White? I'm not sure. They cut their names off. In Massachusetts, we've got Elizabeth Warren. And of course, like I said, Bernie Sanders sitting up there in Vermont. Apparently didn't want to run this year. He's already got 14 summer homes. What does he need more for? Texas, 38% reporting. It is dead. It is a dead tie at the moment. Holy shit. Between Colin uh, Alred, the Democrat, and Ted Cruz, the Republican, 49% uh, percent each. Missouri, we've got Josh Hockley and Lucas Kuntz. <laughs> who won? Who won in Missouri? Ah, uh, Kunt did. Uh, Kunt won in Missouri. we got Pennsylvania, Bob Casey and Dave McCormick. Uh, Elisa Slotkin and Mike Rogers in Michigan. Everybody else is reporting. It's all leaning. There's not anything definitive. Maryland, we've got Laura or Larry Hogan and Angela Elsbro. But still early days there. Anything really interesting on the House? Not really. GOP, 48. Dems, 28. And it's going to be really late in the evening by the time you get something that's super interesting. Oops, looks like they're calling more states. we got more states called, everybody. Oh, you shit. I'm so excited. My nipples are hard. My fucking nipples are Let's see who got called. Looks like Don Don and Kamala got some more, more states coming in here. What do we got in the camp totally right now for Donald? We've got Florida, South Carolina, West Virginia, Kentucky, Indiana, Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Giving Donald 101 electoral votes. What do we got for Kamala? What is she sitting on? Well, we've got Vermont, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, Connecticut, New Jersey, and Maryland. Currently sitting... 101 electoral votes for Donald Trump, 49 for Harris, 17.2 million popular vote going to Trump, 14.6 going to Harris. Now we really are going to have to wait a while. Now I'm going to have to work, or I'm going to have to use my stunning personality to talk about a name shit while we wait for more numbers to come in. I forgot how horrible, how horrible election streams can be when nothing's, when crazy people aren't doing crazy shit currently at the moment. Currently, currently at the moment, we're sitting at, um, oh, 94,000 people watching. Very believable. Again, donate $1 a piece. We just want to, we need to fact check that. Also, I think, um, <laughs> I think our poll is done. We've gone 10 minutes. Who's going to win it? Trump, 83%. Kamala Harris, 17%. I think we're going to call it there. 8,000 votes have come in. 83. Looks like Trumpster's taking it. He's going to just put a little pin in that one for now. Put a little pin in that one. What do you say, chat? Shall we wander over to the uh, the battlefield that is social media and see people screaming at each other? I'm thinking so. Let's find out how my vagina is doing. How, you know, everybody's getting ready. Project 2025 is coming. Forced impregnations are right around the corner. <laughs> oh, God, I love, I love just the bullshit propaganda. It's very fun. It's always very fun listening to people that act like the Apocalypse is right around the corner. But let's see what happens. Let's go and take a look and see what's trending right now. Florida is trending, right? I need those big stories. In fact, I'll let you help me. If you find something insane or politically relevant, feel free to tweet it at Moshi 
Moshi Moan. That's M O S H I M O S H I M O A N. So it's like Moshi Moshi Moan. Well, let's see what what do we got? Everybody just talking about what we've already gone over. West Virginia obviously being called for Donald Trump. Come on, folks. We need I need those hot news items. Uh, I want to I want to I want to hear somebody give me their their hot take. Let's see what Charlie Kirk is saying. We'll look at some Republicans. We'll look at some Democrats. Let's see what the talking heads are talking about at the moment. Exit polls right now from NBC are saying that the Indies are Republican plus six. If this is remotely accurate, Kamala is going to have a very rough time pulling out a win in Pennsylvania. Sounds like he's positive. Sounds like he's got a good feeling about what's going on. According to the NBC exit polls, Donald Trump is doing 8% better with young voters compared to 2020. I would like to talk a little bit about the demographics. People were saying that as the day approached, and even today itself, that when you're talking about early voting, that Republicans were much more uh, involved than they ever had before, that they were getting their numbers out higher than they were before, at least compared to 2020 or 2016, saying that they felt uh, this is coming for pundits on both sides, you know, MSNBC, Fox News, Talking Heads Online, essentially saying that if a majority of women show up at the polls today, that they think it's going to go to Kamala. If it's more men, they think it's going to go to Trump. That was the assessment from a lot of people. So I'm watching what's going on on social media. What what are the news stories? A lot of men start showing up, talking about very long lines in lots of different states, but then talking about it kind of dipping off. Then you got that chick dressed as a hands tail show, or handsmaid tail showing up. So I mean, which way is it going to go? Which, which way is it going to go? Everybody keeps talking about their specific group. Young voters, Latino voters, black voters, inner city versus rural voters. But, you know, the aggregate of what I've seen talked about is Republicans got a lot of early voting done. Republicans got a lot of rural people out and Republicans got a lot of men out. That's even with Harris doing her just awful, awful campaign of Harris, uh, men for Harris or straight men for Harris or white dudes for Harris, whatever it was called. To really try to get that uh, testosterone vote going for them didn't seem to didn't seem to work out. Didn't seem to really hit home like they were hoping it was going to. <laughs> so uh, you know, who's to say? But boy, they love their fucking polls. Trump wins Florida, coming from Turning Point. I mean, I don't think we've how many th- how, honestly, Chad? How many of these elections have we watched? I think there are certain states that we all figure. It's going to definitely go one way or the other. I don't think that really surprises anybody. So really what this night comes down to is everybody's sitting around and waiting for maybe eight to ten states that they would consider a swing state. In which way are those going to go? Because that's what they figure is going to decide it. I don't think we're going to see a night where suddenly Texas is deep blue and California is flipped red. Nobody's going to be shocked when the results from these states come in. So you've got to just kind of sit and wait. It's like Christmas Day. You kind of know what the fuck is wrapped and sitting under the, you know, the tree. You can figure it out, jiggle it around a little bit, the dimensions and the weight, give it away a little bit. But really, until you dig in and unwrap the motherfucker, you don't know. So you just got to sit and you got to wait and it drives you crazy. And that's what, that's what this evening always is. And the great thing about it, the longer it goes on and the more you have to wait, the crazier fucking people are going to get. So which way is it going to go? I don't know. But I've put my I put my prediction out there. I think Donald Trump is going to take it. I think he's going to take it uh, fairly decisively. Again, not saying it's going to be some crazy fucking sweep like a Reagan, but I think he's going to take it. So will I have egg on my face? Will the chat that voted 83 percent for Trump have egg on their face? Perhaps is Charlie Kirk going to be crying tonight? Maybe. I don't know. Oh shit! Breaking news, chat. Breaking news. Sorry. Breaking news coming in right now. It looks like ABC is calling that we've got a third contender in the race. Shockingly, Kanye West has taken 14 different states. It looks like Kanye's put out uh, a statement about the shocking turn of events. I couldn't have done it without my little gay lover, Nick Fuentes. I love that gay little brown boy. That gay little brown boy, Nick Fuentes, really got Yeezy up in here doing the beezy. I love my little gay Latino boy, Nickus Nick Fuentes. Thank you, Nick Fuentes, for helping me take 14 states. Gay little lover boy, my little brown gay lover boy. Thank you for betting your reputation on me, my gay little brown lover boy, Nicholas Fuentes. Kanye West is in love with you. That is me. I am Kanye West. 
Please put on your trash bag and dance for me, little boy. <laughs> dance for me, little groper. Oh, 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 thank you, Nick. Oh, we're going to win. We are winning right now. Okay, well, that was a statement from Kanye West after taking 14 states and thanking Nick Fuentes for his political acumen and his uh, decisive um, political insight that has really helped him capture the heart of America and uh, really become a contender. I think Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are in a <laughs> great amount of trouble. A great amount of trouble. Dance cat boy, is that what he's saying? He might. He might be saying that right now. Sadly, we've lost 30,000 viewers. I think they've all been shocked. Shocked, I tell you, by the news that Kanye West is killing it out there. And that he is currently he's currently um, just tearing it up. 14 states. I can't believe it. I should have put more faith in the Gripers and Nick Fuentes. Who knew? Who knew? Charlie Kirk's looking pretty stupid right now. Back in Trump. Should have trusted Nick. <laughs> oh. Please, chat, try to, you know, calm down. I know, it's shocking. Can't believe Nick is just blowing it out of the water. Really amazing assault. Nothing but up on that one. Nothing but up. <laughs> okay. I don't know why this is, okay, crazy, weird. I'm sorry, my chat's getting, it's like, stuttering out on me i i think it's actually it, it my the chat feature itself on youtube has like fun it, it got all fucked up when i mentioned how great kanye is doing I, do we have a i should find a political speech from kanye <laughs> get me banned right off youtube immediately oh it's not going good oh boy it looks like jill stein should have just teamed up she'll be in the vice presidential candidate she'd have 14 states right now like kanye does but nope nope she's got to go on her own Got to try to be Miss Independent. Didn't work out, did it, Jill? Should have gone with Kanye. He'd be a winner right now, Jill. Let's see what else we've got. What's going on in Kentucky and Indiana? Saying Trump is projected to win Kentucky. Shocking. Wow. Who saw that coming? Looks like Kamala Harris might win Vermont. Oh, boy. Shocking again. Hope you all placed your bets and won money on those long shots. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Oh, boy. Have we had any egregious things happening at the polls? Chad, is, have any of you seen anything egregious happening? Anybody acting crazy? Anybody getting thrown out? I've seen one or two stories this evening happen in relation to this, where it's somebody that, you know, is uh, tabulating votes or, you know, a poll watcher, a uh, government official, a few things about people not getting their ballots, a few things about the systems being down, a few things about people showing up late, uh, one or two fights. But I haven't seen anything crazy. You know, nothing like 2016, nothing like 2020 yet. But am I just missing that? Do we have anybody being goofy little fuckers out there yet? I don't know. We'll have to watch. watch Party for Kamala. And I wish I could show this on stream. Somebody sent me, uh, this is a breaking news photo, Watch Party for Kamala, and it's taken from across the street. And it seems to be about 13 uh, naked men um, all butt-fucking each other. <laughs> I guess that's the watch the watch parties. I wish I could share it with you, chat, but I don't think YouTube's going to like it too much. I don't think they're going to allow me to do that. We've got something from uh, 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 somebody sending this to me. There's an absurd amount of women in line at Trader Joe's buying only wine. Looks like some people aren't taking the election well right now. It's not, uh, it's not, co election count stormed. Oh, what do we got? We have a storming happening. Pennsylvania, oh, this is breaking news. Let's see if this is real or not. Pennsylvania voting site evacuated as disruptors storm building trying to upset the election results. Well, it looks like everybody knows this is a, a vital state. So what the hell is going on down there? What what uh, voting site was this? I mean, it's a little vague, just saying the voting site. Let me, let me see. Can you tell me where? Where is this happening? No, of course not. They're not going to tell me specifically which voting site. Just one happened. People have stormed the building, but I can't give you any more, inf no more information for you. I'm sorry. No, you get no more information. Just rest assured the voting site has been stormed. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll take that one. All right, let's, let's run over, Chad. Let's look back and see. Uh, are we, do we have more votes being tabulated currently? Oh, looks like Harris is taking more states. Let's see what we got here. 
Which one did she? I I really should keep a more coherent list because I'm not. I'm being terrible. Right now, Donald Trump, 101 electoral votes. Harris now at 71. She's got Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont. And they're giving her Illinois with 9% reporting. Harris has taken Illinois with uh, 310,000 to Donald Trump's 239,000 votes. Giving her the extra 19 electoral votes. Popular vote, Donald's almost breaking 20. 19.4 million to Harris's 16.4 million. Let's take a look at the Senate really quick. Yeah, still sitting at 43 to 34. How's the House doing? Uh, Republicans sitting at 60 seats compared to the Democrats. 35 early days. How are ballot measures going? I wish they're not telling me any ballot measures. As far as governors, 22 for the GOP, 21 for the Dems. But has, has anything been called that nobody was expecting? We've got so far called right now tonight, Vermont for Phil Scott. West Virginia's got Patrick Morris. And Indiana has Mike Braun. Are the three that they've called so far this evening? Oh, no, I'm sorry. We've got Delaware going for Matt Meyer, or Mayor, however you pronounce it. So if that means something to you, congratulations. I don't know who any of those people are. I'm like most Americans. I have a narrow attention span, and I pay attention to the big numbers which is Donald Trump and Kamala Harris. Everything else is just fucking confusing to me. Let's see. Tracking the swing states. This is over on the New York Times. Right now they've got Georgia, and this is a margin they're giving it. So they're giving it a Trump plus 11. Michigan, they're giving Harris plus 13. North Carolina, Trump plus 6. Pennsylvania, they have Harris at plus 39. Holy fuck. Arizona, no votes yet. Nevada, no votes. And uh, Wisconsin, nothing. How the fuck do they have Pennsylvania for Harris at plus 39? I need to go look at the numbers over in Pennsylvania. What is happening in Pennsylvania? Let me just refresh your chat. One moment. With 12% reporting in at Pennsylvania, 69% of the vote going to Kamala, 575,000 votes to Donald Trump's 251,000. But again, early days. More states are starting to fill in, but it's only leaning. Getting nobody calling anything yet. See, I think the best way to really predict which way is this election going to go early on is to find out which group of news people are most incoherent and freaking the fuck out on their broadcast. Now, Jack, can you tell me, um, has MSNBC started ritual suicides yet? Are people at CNN tying the nooses? Has Fox News opened the windows on the 40th floor? Like, do we have that information? Can, can we get that information to figure out which way this is going to go early on? Somebody in chat, Philly shit fuckery is at hand. Way too early. Coming from Toxic Dubs. Philly is raked from Sergeant Fuck Off. Somebody stopped the count already. Uh, somebody saying they all are. All the news stations? Well, of course, they're all shocked that Kanye West is just dunking on everybody. Again, thanking Nick Fuentes personally. For just winning it for him. For just taking that victory. Oh, I don't even know what the Young Turks are doing. They're throwing themselves out of... I, I don't... <laughs> is St. Euchre ritualistically molesting a horse right now? The last I checked, uh, Anna has kind of like had... She's starting to have a little bit of an epiphany when it comes to her political opinions. So she's starting to fight a lot more with her, uh, with her own audience. With her own side, would it be? So I don't know how she'll take tonight. But I'm sure she hates Donald Trump. I'm sure they all fucking hate Donald Trump. I don't think that's changed. Sweep, sweep, sneed, sweep, sneed, and sweep. Maybe. Is Sank sobbing? Is he currently crying right now? Are you all enjoying the election coverage? <laughs> I should Maybe I should have started later in the evening. Maybe that would have been better. We'd have more electoral uh, results, more states called. But it's, you know, what? We've got 12 minutes for more stuff to come in? 12 minutes before it starts to heat up a little bit more. We got a little more information. All I can really give you is a popular vote. That doesn't really mean much, though, does it? I mean, we're looking at those swing states. Which way are they going to go? Well, it looks like North Carolina flip-flopped a little bit. North Carolina now reporting 23% in, 52% going to Donald Trump, with 46% going to Kamala. Uh, For the majority of the early voting, early evening, that was reversed with Kamala having a lead there. Now it leans to Donald Trump. Currently, they have them listed. Again, this is, you know, putting together the two different sources. If you want to look where things are leaning, we've got, for Donald Trump, North Dakota, Texas, Missouri, Georgia, North Carolina, Virginia, and Maine. But Maine's got like 10 people who voted. I wouldn't even really consider that. 
As far as Kamala, we've got Kansas, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire, and is that it? And I believe that's it. And we're, we're awaiting more results again, more results in like 10 minutes. More states are coming in. We're going to have a lot of stuff like Louisiana, Wisconsin, uh, Iowa, ooh, Minnesota, New York. Yeah, we got, we got lots of people coming in. So we'll have a lot more information. I don't know. I'm getting a little excited. It looks like Florida, by the way, is pretty much lock solid. Again, was that surprising to anybody? 92% have reported in. 5.8 million votes going to Donald Trump. 4.5 million going to Kamala. That's a pretty gigantic fucking gap. Currently in Texas, the gap between the two, again, not super surprising. Half a million voters. Donald Trump having a, a solid lead at the moment with 52% reporting in. With 3.5 million votes to Kamala's 3 million votes. But Pennsylvania, though, yeah, her lead is growing. Still 13% uh, reporting in, but she's got 610,000 votes to his 280,000. With 13% of the precincts reporting in. Michigan, 55 to 42%. And Kansas, 52 to 46%. But we need, we need more information. We need to understand. <laughs> we need more numbers to work with here. Now, if I were streaming on any other platform, I could just throw up another stream, you know, a newscast, and we could watch that as they sob silently to themselves or celebrate. I don't know which way they're going to go with it. But sadly, I can't do that over here. They don't let me do that over here. Even though I'm streaming to 64,000 people, thank you very much, who are very real and not botted and need to all donate $1 a piece, thank you. Okay, that's how we need to do this. We got people already talking shit. Trump's going to lose. Somebody's saying in there, a little, it's a little hurtful, I'm going to be honest. You know, I put, I, put, I put my energy behind him, and if he loses, I'm going to look a little stupid. It's going to feel a little silly. Oh, can we? Let's take a look. It's Senate results, nothing new. House results, 65 for the Republicans, 36 for the Democrats. And again, nothing shocking to me, at least right now. Uh, just taking a look. Is there anything that's that's narrowly expected to win or uh, nothing yet. Still early days. How about the Senate? Is there anything that's been shocking here? Oh, that's a little weird. There is one small little a Maryland result for Democrats. It's not looking very good. It's a little strange, but uh, still very early. I feel like a professional newscast to chat. Oh, oh, listen to me being all professional about this. God, I hate politics. <laughs> I hate announcing politics. I just want to see some shit talk. Come on. Come on, social media. Where are the crazy people being insane? Where are the fucking nutcases? Looking for anybody? As, uh, l l let's see. Let's see. Is Scarborough, you know, cutting himself? Is he, is he having a bad evening? Is, is Kirk slamming his head into the wall? Somebody's got somebody's to give right now. See if there's anything, anything remarkable trending. No, hey, people are talking about Florida like that's surprising. I, I I don't think that result in Florida is surprising at all. Were, were there people really thinking that was going to shift blue? I, I I don't know why. I mean, you get the debate about Pennsylvania or other places, but <laughs> but Florida, I don't think so. Well, let's see. No, no, nothing yet. I'm, I'm looking, boys. I'm looking for the interesting shit, but we've got to wait another five minutes, which is the perfect time for me to be a whore. Since we're waiting for the next batch of information to come in, which is going to drop, we're going to get more states. It's going to give us a hell of a lot better idea where the fuck the night's going. But that's going to be about uh, seven minutes away, which is, which is when Jimmy Boy starts selling things like a whore. Remember, celebrate. Or or uh, rue the evening, I guess, depending on which way it's going for you. Again, it's very early, but maybe you're really locked in and you're like, fuck, I can't believe Kanye West is killing it tonight. Pick up some merchandise. Oh, look at that. The nightmare before elections and a vote, along with that patriotic red, white, and blue uh, uh, cap, I know. Buy a hat for your hat and a hat for that hat. Celebrate the elections. Remember the evening. Either, uh, you know, the evening when freedom won, or we're all put in dystopia. I guess it really depends which way you're looking at it, but either way, 
whether you're living on a verdant green field with your family celebrating life and um, all taxes have disappeared and everything's like post-scarcity and it's great, or you're in a horrible concentration camp being bred against your will, at least you have a really neat sweater and a really nice mug and a hat. So I'll let my little commercial for my mug and my hat play. And when we come back, we'll have more results. We'll have an idea of uh, which way is this country going tonight, boys. By buying a goddamn American capitalist hat. Oh, got to use that USA dollars to do it. Where are you going to do that, you ask? Well, you don't really ask, but I'm going to show you anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to show you anyway. Dude, buy, buy a hat for your hat. Oh, holy shit. Oh, what a fucking beautiful ending to this. Oh, God, let me get a cigarette for this one. Oh, and we're back. Oh, we're back. Oh, I got a little more information, apparently, on our our storming of the polling site. This is coming from the Daily Mail. Here are the details we have. Well, we went on the new state information coming in, in the next couple of minutes. Of course, now they're going to just nail me with ads. I can't. I guess I can't bitch too much after my five-minute-long hat commercial. Oh, boy, Jim, what's good for the goose is good for the gander, I suppose. All right, here we go. A voting site in the key swing state of Pennsylvania has been evacuated after being stormed by, quote-unquote, disruptors. Multiple people burst into the center, or the Center County Election Office and Bellefonte shortly after 7 p.m. Eastern today. Triggered an evacuation by local police, according to the Center County Report. Oh, what 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 do we have here? Uh, the identities of the disruptors has not been shared, and no further details on their behavior has been released. It's also unclear if they are supporting Donald Trump or Kamala Harris. Locals are seen outside the city center in Belafonte, Pennsylvania, on Tuesday after disruptors. Okay, there's nothing here. Just that there's been an evacuation because a bunch of people stormed the building, but they don't know who they are or why they're there. Riveting reporting. Well, at least we have some information. Another uh, a bit of news that people wanted me to bring up was Amendment 4, or the initiative that was being voted on in Florida, saying that it's been defeated. I believe this was the abortion one. Uh, I'll go from this again. Lives of TikTok. Uh, huge is what they say. Democrats tried to turn Florida into an abortion Planned Parenthood sanctuary. It was an epic fail. Florida is a red state which protects the lives of the unborn, saying that Florida Amendment 4, right to abortion initiative, has been uh, defeated or has failed. Somebody also bringing up Amendment 3, but I'm not 100% certain what that is, so I don't know what to tell you. But it's a little bit of a little bit of the political information as we wait for... Oh, we got more stuff coming in. Oh, boy, here we go. Let's see. Let's go, boys. More stuff's coming in. Uh, who, do we, who do we have? Oh, no, no. Everybody's being extra fucking slow as things are getting, uh, getting uh, colored in. Right now, if we go to the New York Times, it's got Donald Trump sitting at 109 electoral votes to Kamala Harris's 99. They're calling Cali or I'm sorry, California. They're calling New York for Kamala. Which was the other state they gave Donald? I'm not sure. I think it was West Virginia or Kentucky, one of the two. But I know we've got a lot more coming in. I know the polls are closing. Uh, here we go. Uh, over on the New York Times, they're updating. Donald Trump now 120, taking North Dakota, South Dakota, and Nebraska. I don't think that's super surprising for anybody. Still have Kansas leaning towards Kamala, Missouri leaning towards Kamala, Pennsylvania, that gap, uh, it's actually closing a little bit now. 700,000 for Kamala Harris with 15% reporting. Donald Trump now starting to gain with 370,000. Michigan is off by 40,000 with only 9% reporting in. New Hampshire, 10% difference between the two, which is just maybe 20,000 votes. And in Maine, it changed because <laughs> it had like 10 people voting earlier. 1% reporting is now leaning towards Kamala, but only by, I, I kid you not, 60 votes. Uh, Georgia still in the Trump camp, Texas still in the Trump camp, and New Mexico split 20% between him and Chase Oliver with 650 votes uh, apiece. Which way will it go? I don't know. And again, don't forget Kanye West has taken 14 states. Every state I haven't talked about, it's gone to it's gone to Kanye. He's taken Iowa, <laughs> Wisconsin, Minnesota, Montana, Idaho. He took California, Oregon, Washington, Alaska, and Hawaii, shocking the world. Also D.C. He took D.C. as well. Just, just batting a thousand out there, Kanye. We're all just super. Th we're all really impressed. What a good job you've done. Uh, let's take a look at the Senate. Forty-six seats for the Republicans, thirty-five for the Dems. Nothing really new there. 
as far as the House results, 73 for the Republicans, 40 for the Democrats, and the governorships, 23 for the GOP, 22 for the Dems. Which one's got called? North Carolina being called for the Democrats. Josh Stein taking it with 37% reporting in. And Missouri is leaning, leaning towards Crystal Quaid, 49%, but it's very close. About 400 votes separate Crystal and Mike Cahoe, is that his name, in Missouri for the governorship. I'm waiting for more. What do we got for popular vote? Still, Donald has maintained his popular vote lead the entire evening, sitting at 23.6 million to Kamala's 20 million, uh, 20 and a half million. He's got a 3 million lead on them. Again, I don't know where all those magical four bajillion Biden voters are. Still waiting on them to just uh, show up at the polling places and just really shock everybody. But apparently that's not happening just yet. Are they calling Wyoming for Trump as well? Uh, yes, they are. So that was North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wyoming. All for all being called for Donald Trump. He's got that solid center of the country that we've, we've seen before, where it's just a straight line down the center. With, you know, Oklahoma there, Texas looking like it's going that way. It's Kansas is being a little bit difficult with 34% reporting in, still leaning towards Kamala in Missouri uh, doing that as well. Uh, does that shock you, Chad? Are you shocked? We're really just kind of focusing in on Pennsylvania, waiting to see which way that's going to go. We're waiting to see which way these flipping states are going to go. Oh, boy. I know there's a path to victory. Everybody's talked about it. They've, they've mapped it out which way is it going to go. Uh, we're just going to have to wait. It's going to be an evening-long process. I hope you're all looking for What was it Obama said earlier today when he came out? I'm pretty sure he released a statement where he said something along the lines of, Hey, now, guys. You may have to wait a week and a half to get those results, so be patient. Yeah, let me sit around for a week and a half. How the fuck is it that you guys can't count votes? You need a week and a half to do that? That it never was that way before. It's like people magically believe this is how it should be. No, it shouldn't. I think you probably can get it. You know, there are a few outside exceptions. Maybe you got like a really close race and there's some shit coming overseas or something. Or, you know, there's like, you know, mail-ins that you're waiting for. But this whole, oh, well, we're going to have to give some states a week, a week and a half. It's like he's just, he's prepping your anus. Obama's out there lubing you up. He's getting you ready to accept the fucking that's coming. <laughs> to make sure you're bent over when some shenanigans come in. I don't know. It's been a very weird last couple of days. Everybody's saying all of a sudden those polls are flipping. All the betting ads, uh, they're flipping. All the politicians are saying, just prepare yourself. Just wait. Prepare yourself. Oh, sadly, it looks like the news was not. People were upset when they found out that Kanye is sitting at 14 states. Uh, the audience we had of 90,000 watching previously, 80,000 of them have committed Sudoku. It's very sad. Rip and pepperoni. Can I get a rip and pepperoni in chat? Can we get a rip for the 80,000 people that have disappeared? You'll live in my hearts forever. We'll always remember you. You shouldn't be scared of letting a black man like Kanye lead this country. He'll make you wear a trash bag and really shitty shoes. But at least you got some bops to listen to. You got some music to dance around to. Be happy about that. Rip our fallen comrades. Rip our fellow viewers. Yeah, F's and P's and rips and S's. Just the whole variety of things for them. Well, all the 11,000 of us that are left will miss you forever. Forever and ever. Or maybe they all took that opportunity to go buy an amazing mug and an amazing hat and an amazing shirt over at medicare.myshopify.com. The best way to celebrate election night is with shitty merchandise made in a sweatshop and delivered right to your house at a price that just isn't appropriate. <laughs> oh, but we should honor the children forced to make that merchandise with their tiny little fingers by grabbing a credit card and placing an order. Just saying. Just saying. Throwing that out there. Buying hats for hats, that's the way to go. And I'm still sitting at 120 to 99. Remember, the path to a victory, for those that are unaware, maybe you're from another country, you don't know how this uh, election thing over here works. It's not first past the post or whatever they do in the UK. Uh, it's whoever gets the uh, enough electoral votes, in which case uh, this evening will be 270 they need. Donald Trump was 120. Kamala sitting at 99. But they're waiting for that number. And of course, you've got a few big, a big gimme states that have a ridiculous amount of electoral votes that we just know are going to go one way or the other. That's not really a surprise. You've got stuff like California. We know is going to go to Harris and stuff like Texas, which is more than likely going to go to Trump. You know, there's some big, big fatty numbers that we know are going to go there. 
but everybody's looking at Pennsylvania and it's 19 electoral votes. Looking at stuff like Wisconsin and uh, uh, Michigan, you know, uh, sitting there, what is it, 15 for Michigan electoral votes? What other, what other, what do we got? North Carolina with its 16. So far, North Carolina, 40% reporting in. Donald Trump holding on to his lead, which he flipped from earlier when Kamala was leading a little bit. 51% to her, 47%. 1.2 million to 1.1 million. So about 100,000 separating them there. But it's Pennsylvania everybody's going to watch. Donnie Boy is closing the gap little by little. She had a massive gap going on there, but he's still down 300,000 votes. Again, only 17%. I'm sure somebody who's more informed would be able to say, oh, well, it's because this county and this county has voted. It's because the results are coming in from this region, and we know these voters live there, and that sort of shit. I have none of that insight, which is why you should never have me be an election stream person. So instead, while we're waiting for more information to come in, chat, I'm going to start reading some of these super chats. Let's see. If all 90,000 of those people sent me a dollar so I can read their political insights. Hold on. Is this even going to work for me? Is it going to show me the, the big dollar we do? I don't know. Let's see here. Give me one second while we load these up. What do we got here? We got one from I don't know anymore. Lipstick Larry says, favorite Pop-Tart, Jim. I don't, uh, I don't have a favorite Pop-Tart. I'm sorry. I'm not a Pop-Tart guy. I'm just, just not doing it. Ross Walker, I'm not a bot. You're a bot. Hurtful. From William Gaines. Shout out to my homie C Money. We about to be on the boat. From Trey Decca 13. I can't believe Montana's projected red state when it clearly looks like Joe Biden sniffing Idaho. Is that true? I need to go look at this. Oh, there he is. He has his nose firmly. You know what, sir? You are correct. That is Joe Biden, and he is sniffing it. Like it's a confused preteen girl at a photo op in the White House. <laughs> we'll have to see where that goes later on, though. James Kirk, this is what I came for. Love you, Cancer Man. From Mizu, fact check by the Sweetie Squad. We always fact check things out here. We like to get our information accurately out to the people. From Crab Crat Hat, that. Uh, Jim Florida is against weed now, and Loudoun County, where all the feds live, say no to Kamala due to people of gender. So, was that the other thing they were voting on? So, they, they said, yes, we're going to ban abortion and no more weed to smoke. We want all those women that are getting bred against their will not to have the escape of marijuana. I want you to be I want you to be coherent when I when I make you miserable under directive Project 2025. Welcome to the cyberpunk future of Donald Trump. Oh, you should have voted harder in your handmade Dale outfit. From Hunter G, I died on the Mayflower, but I've been resurrected to watch this stream. From Boss Tiger, Jim, did you somehow anchor every god and every religion in order to have them all curse you with crappy health? Did you name your disease after you? Well, name it after me. I'm sure I pissed somebody off. Alex Explosion, thanks for the streaming. Cancer Man, Jim, by the way, I was watching the 2016 election stream you did this morning, and I think they found a cure for your cancer. Super male vitality, you said you grew six inches. Potentially, I've lost two. Need to gain back six. Who knows? Maybe when Kanye is elected president because he is kicking ass right now. Um, he'll dedicate research with our tax money to curing me. I'll be very happy for that. From Rowdy Parnell, I voted for Trump and my girlfriend is a foreigner. She approved. From Extort, I know that the cope won't be as sweet as 2016, but still looking forward to the wailing and gnashing of teeth from the anti-Trump crowd. I think that's what a lot of, you know, 2016 was great and that the reaction was so over the top, it was amazing. <laughs> I don't think, I mean, if you weren't really paying attention, maybe you were too young at the time, you're a foreigner, you're not really interested, or you're just out of politics and you're not looking at social media. The 2016 reaction was so disproportionate. Um, it was amazing. It wasn't just, you know, the one or two clips that you'd see passed around frequently where it was somebody in the street, like, screaming, you know, the, the, the chick in the rain slicker kind of image being representative of that. Um, you had corporations that were holding hug circles because their employees couldn't take it. Don't forget, Google had a thing where they had people wear like helicopter hats and come in and hug each other while diversity and equity speakers were up on stage saying they would get through this um, traumatic event. It's the goofiest thing I've ever seen. There were the the super compilations of all the night, uh, you know, the hosts of like late night shows or news media melting down. You got like hour long compilations. You had the whole Young Turks, which was like a 30 minute video on its own of just them getting more and more depressed as the evening went on. Um, and that was fantastic. Now, this this feels a bit more subdued so far this evening. Not really seeing people freak out just yet. 
But um, it was definitely funny. And I really hope we get some more of that energy going on this night. I really, I really hope we have people flip the fuck out in that particular way. Because uh, it's super entertaining. <laughs> let's see. I'm looking for anybody that's got to. Let's see what we got here. From Derek. I work Wall Street in investments. I am socially conservative, but economically a democratic socialist. Trump sucks. Bernie was right. Working middle class people need to unite on economic lines, so they're getting screwed. I think you'll find that nobody is ever going to talk about class. They will always, always, always find a way to throw it off on something else. Make it a race issue. Make it a gender issue. But you don't want the people talking about money. Oh, because when they talk about money, then shit gets real, real quick. Because nobody likes to get fucked and not be able to afford a house or make their rent or pay their car note or buy groceries or have a livable wage or a future. I feel bad for Gen Alpha or Gen Z or whatever Gen it is that's growing up now. Because what do you have to look forward to? A retirement age that's 70 or 75? Buying a house when you're 50? Uh, paying rent? Right now, for a one or two bedroom apartment that's two or twenty, you know, two thousand dollars, twenty five hundred dollars, but not being able to qualify for a house, right? That would have a mortgage payment of seventeen or eighteen hundred. Imagine you have a rental history where you've made rent every day. You're you, immaculate, immaculate rental history, always paying on that twenty five hundred dollar one bedroom shit heap of an apartment in the city. But they won't let you have a house when you'd be paying less. After showing that kind of diligence, because what, your job doesn't pay you just enough to really hit it, because your credit's just a little bit dinged and fucked, because you've tried to survive under an economy that's just absolutely ass-fucked you? No, you don't want people talking about uh, money. Don't want them talking about class. Don't want that conversation getting brought up, because people get big mad. But I look at these kids, and I think, they're fucked. How are they going to afford a house? They're going to work longer and work harder for less money, and... That money isn't going to go towards ownership of anything or equity in anything. It's going to go to a landlord. And that's not shitting on people that are landlords or have rental properties. But it's just, it's really dark that that's what they got to go through. And then your job security, you're going to work till you're fucking 70? 75? That's some fucked up shit, man. I could understand the anchor. So yeah, they're going to make you talk about everything else but that. Oh, they don't want you talking about that shit. Sorry, that's it's little Jimmy going off on a tirade there. Sorry about that, boys. A little Jimmy getting a little heated there for a moment. People chat. Uh, we're all fucked. Uh, Grim saying thanks, Boomer Jim. Yeah, I mean, I'll tell you. I'll be honest with you. Um, I think... Uh, here's my conspiracy, by the way. I think those Occupy Wall Street hippies, and I did love making fun of them. Don't get me wrong. I, I did. You know, it was very fun to make fun of them. But I feel like they were intentionally co-opted to steer them off of talking about some of the shit they were talking about. I feel like they started to hit a, a little bit of a trend and start to appeal maybe a little bit to mainstream America and talking about the things that were going on and, you know, just the situation with the economy and taxes and all that kind of shit. And then here come the crazy people named Ketchup and Mustard to talk about their vaginas and everything fucking imploded. <laughs> oh, they cut the knees off of that motherfucker real quick. Occupy Wall Street. No, I don't think so, good sir. We need to talk about your vagina and uh, progressive pyramids and other crazy shit. Stop talking about your income. We need to talk about vaginas. Stat, let's talk about race. Oh, let's talk about race and vaginas. Stop talking about how hard it is to pay your rent. Now get in the cube, eat the bugs, work, work, and work until you want to just put a bullet in your head. <laughs> Oh, I mean, holy shit. Isn't Amazon installing, like, suicide cubes? Well, they're not really suicide cubes, but they're like, you're working in an Amazon fucking warehouse. Your benefits are shit. Your hours are shit. You're barely making anything. And how does Amazon address it? They give you a little cube to go sit in that, like, teaches you corporate propaganda. It's like a mantra to repeat to yourself. How fucking dystopian and dark is that? Oh, kids have got it rough. Oh, you guys are so fucked. You're really so fucked. And I think the most infuriating thing about it is there are a lot of things we could do to fix it, and there are a lot of things we could look at to really address it. But boy, I think we really have let certain corporations run rickshaw across this country in a ways they never should have been allowed to. 
by buying up politicians and currying favor and then you know eking in and taking uh and buying up property and just fucking families out of homes so they can make sure you rent for the rest of eternity what a scary thought they've really trained people well i mean myself included all of us you've been trained with the mindset that ownership is bad and you don't get anything positive out of that i mean look at media for fuck's sake uh everything is delivered digitally to you and sure that's convenient but your your media that you buy for your escapism your your movies and your music and your games it's all fucking digital it's a rental now you don't even own that shit so you're renting your escape and the rented place you live that you're trying to escape from. And your car is leased. You don't own that shit either. Your leased car, your rented apartment, and your borrowed licensed entertainment. Like, what do you have at the end of the day when they kick you into the gutter because you complained a little too much? What a dark fucking future. I'd be pissed. I'd be so fucking mad. <laughs> if I was these kids, I would be fucking fuming. Oh, sorry. I, I'm getting all, I'm getting, oh boy. Jim's going on one of his fucking little rants now. Sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. Let's let's continue on here. Uh, from Vincey A17. Hey, Jim. I doubt this will happen, but if Minnesota somehow ends up going red, I'd save every tier of the screeching libtards who are so smug and proud how consistently the state of state blew even during the Reagan landslide. Well, that, yeah, that blue vote during the Reagan landslide was more like a pity thing. Um, I don't see Minnesota turning red, uh, but it would be funny. It would be funny. Let me read a few more of these, and we'll go take a look at the map again and see where we're sitting here, folks. Sorry, one second here. Let's go to that tab. Should pull it up. Are you just gonna? You're gonna just freeze on me. You're just gonna freeze on me. You're gonna be tick about it. From uh, envy of Libra. Uh, thank you for the stream, dude. Wishing you the best turtle life. Jimmy Rants or best rants. Can I get in a woo from chat? I don't know if chat wants to do a woo or not. From Enrique D. The archive of your last stream got me through a crazy electrical job. Here's your cut, Jimbo. Well, thank you very much. From Sus. May you please discuss your favorite memory from university. I think we're going to the same school. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe if I got a little downtime. Let me hit a few more of these because I want to try to stay on top of what the electoral votes are, are going to. Uh, hold on one second here. Why is it not showing? I see larger super chats coming in. I want to try to get to them because uh, they're larger, uh, but it's being difficult here. Here we got one from RV Schwartz, one for me and one for the hundred bots. Don't we love our bots, folks? Aren't they just wonderful? But they've all gone to vote for Kanye now. <laughs> so I'm shit out of luck, I guess. Uh, from Duralex, said Lex, just a dollar. How about a hundred for all the laughs and good times over the years? God bless you. Well, thank you very much. Looks like you're getting your woos in chat, I'm seeing. Let's go back and take a look at the electoral votes and see if we got any changes. Oh, my God. Donald Trump pulling out the big dick. I'm seeing big numbers come in. Hold on here, folks. Big dick mega energy. But, of course, this is, again, coming from a state we're expecting. But right now, as it stands, Donald Trump has 177 electoral votes. Kamala Harris a meager 99. Oh, laughable. Uh, Trump sitting at 27.9 million in the popular vote. Kamala, 24.6 million. Let's take a look at what we got in Donald's camp. Obviously, a few have popped in to really push him. Again, we've got North Dakota, South Dakota, Nebraska, and Wyoming. Oklahoma and Texas. Texas has been called for Trump. We've got Arkansas, Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Florida, South Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky, Indiana, Ohio and West Virginia, currently leaning towards Trump, our Maine, which is flip-flopping back and forth, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, Wisconsin. Oh, that's why you brought up Minnesota? Because 1% of Minnesota is responding right now, or reporting, with 70% going to Donald Trump and 27 to Kamala. Call it now, it's over. Of course, only 3,000 people have voted. And then Kamala Harris, still sitting with uh, Maryland, Delaware, New Jersey, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, Vermont, and Illinois. Leaning towards Kamala is Michigan, Iowa, Missouri, Kansas, Colorado, and New Mexico. With Pennsylvania, where are we sitting on Pennsylvania? Remember, 
earlier. It was a 400,000 gap, then a 300,000 gap. Where is Trump sitting right now? 22% reporting in, 57% of it going to Kamala with 880,000 votes. Donald Trump sitting at 642,000. So he's dropped it even more. We're now at a 250,000, uh, 240,000 uh, gap between the two. And if I had more information on how county, you know, the counties break down, I could give you a much more insightful look as to how that's going, but I don't know shit. Uh, let's take a look at the Senate. 46 to 35 still. Nothing has changed there. House, 84 being reported uh, in the House for the Republicans. 58 for the Democrats. Still early days. Governorships, any for the people that care, I guess. Uh, we've got for the Republicans, Vermont, West Virginia, Indiana, and North Dakota. And then, again, for the Democrats, looks like it's just Delaware right now. Or No, have they called somebody else? Yep, just Delaware right now. And then Missouri leaning towards the Democrats. As far as ballot measures, we had Amendment 4. Looks like it got shot down in Florida. And I'm not sure what happened with Amendment 3. I'm not 100% certain. I'm sorry, chat, on Amendment 3. Let me let me pull it up, my boy. Let me let me let me pull it up. Amendment three and four has failed. Okay, polls are completely closed in Florida. That's coming from Ron DeSantis. So there you go. There, there you are, folks. See our late breaking news as we as we get close to the end here. As I said, it would be a a shorter stream. I will I will send you off towards another stream that's going to be long format, uh, probably over to the casino where you can get more hot coverage of things that are going. But I'm just, did they even update the story on the <laughs> on the voting site that got overran by the unidentified people who they won't actually say who the fuck they are? Oh, we're not going to, we're not going to give out any details on this. I'm sorry. We can't give you any specifics on which group of people have overtaken our voting station. Sorry about that. Oopsie. Let's see. What I guess what's going on with Poly Market? Donald Trump hits all-time high on Poly Market, sitting at seventy-two percent to Kamala's twenty-nine percent. Again, as wild as that sounds, remember Mark Cuban makes money off every bet that goes on at this place. I wonder if he almost talks shit to entice you to bet just to piss him off, but in reality, he makes money from it. Oh, I bet he thinks he's clever. I bet that's his game. I bet. I bet that's what he's. Oh, I'm sorry, seventy-four to twenty-six now. We got a little bit of a difference going on. I don't know. So the betting markets seem to be behind Trump if you take them for what they are. I don't know. That that's up to you if you want to go with it. But as the night moves on, again, we're waiting for the swing states. That's the decider. That's everything else is really inconsequential. I'll be honest. Now 178 now instead of 177. So 178 electoral votes for Donald Trump to Kamala still sitting at 99. Our boy, our boy's getting there, folks. He's just 92 away from victory. 92 electoral votes away from victory. Uh, can he pull it off? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to go. How's, how's Jill Stein doing? Is she lighting the night on fire? Uh, Jill Stein, currently, compared to the 29 million Donald has and the 26 million Kamala has, for her Green Party, is sitting at 215,000 votes with uh, Chase Oliver from the Libertarian Party, 205,000. Now, if you got rid of everything else that's taking place anywhere in the country and just had the race between Jill Stein and Chase Oliver, a very tight race. Yeah, 10,000 votes separate the two. You know, who, Who's going to win, the Libertarian or the Green Party? I don't know. Is Chase Oliver going to work or walk away with third place? Or is Jill Stein? Oh, and it looks like Kennedy's still getting votes, even though he told people not to. Sitting at 156,900. So uh, directly directly behind both of them. So we'll have to see. We'll wait a little longer. Who's next up here? We've got uh, states like Montana uh, and Utah, Arizona. Well, let's see. Nevada. Who else do we have? So three or four or five. Uh, we got four more coming in at 9 o'clock. So just a half an hour away. We have a little more information. We'll see if Pennsylvania starts to stop leaning so much towards Kamala and starts going towards Trump. 965,000 to 718. He's still maintaining that roughly quarter of a million gap between the two. I don't know. I don't know which way it's going to go, folks. Chat, now that we're a little further into the evening, 
Are you feeling it? Do you think do you think he's gonna take it or is he fucked? Which which way is it going, Chet? Let's do another little poll. Now that you're a little more informed, who's gonna win this? Trump or Kamala? Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. Can't forget 14 state Kanye West. Let's put that up. Let's let you vote on that. <laughs> there we go. Don't forget Kanye. Don't forget he's got that 14, uh, you know, all the Western states that he's taken them. I don't think Jeb's going to win it. I'll be honest with you. I'm, I'm reading you, chat. I don't think Jeb's going to take it. I got a feeling Jeb, it's not looking good for him. Sadly, not looking good for Jeb. I need, like, some break music. Let's see if we can find some, like, Trump wave. You remember that? You remember all the mixes that we used to have for Donald Trump? <laughs> oh, what's that Japanese commercial one? Is that still up? I want to see if I can find that video. That was from 2016? The Japanese Donald Trump. There we go. You know, let me let me play this for a second. I'll take a look at a few videos here while I let you vote in the poll. Oh, I remember this video. I'll turn that off. There we go. Uh, which would I? Uh, da, da, da. Let me just get this set up here. I think there we go. Okay. Oh, the, the good old days. Oh, the shit posts of the past. <laughs> the shit posts of the past, boys. Holy shit, can you believe that? 2016. Oh, eight years ago. Oh, it's a certain vibe to it, certain energy to it. Still a little bit around. Not completely, not completely gone. There's a little bit there. Trumpu. Okay, let's see how our poll did. With 4,000 voting. We'll just, well, it's been a couple minutes. Well, that's good enough. Oh, this is shocking. Kanye almost had an upset. Poor Kamala, though. She's nowhere. She's just completely blown the fuck out. Sorry, Kamala. That's right. Tiggy supports. Tiggy does not support Kamala. Uh, who's going to win this? 50% of you saying Donald Trump. Followed closely by 44% Kanye West. Kamala getting a meager, just disgustingly small amount of five percent people clearly have spoken fucking diggy holy shit oh god i wish they'd done like an election special i wish there was an election special at diggy my boy takester waiting for more numbers to come in here just slowly waiting as it trickles in as we're drip fed through the whole fucking evening of course why wouldn't we be So, uh, is there any new information? Do we have anything at all to go on? Nothing. Just really, it, it, so far, it's mostly the states we expect to flip, or uh, flip, go towards who we expect them to go to, and then one seat has been flipped for the Republicans in the Senate, 
and then the house sitting at 87 to 64, but nothing um, too surprising happening in there. You're going to have to wait. I told you it's like Christmas. You sit around waiting for these fucking states to get their initial numbers in and everybody to get a you know, give a prediction on 3% of the votes counted because they're just so tuned into that shit. And then that's where we go. Now, Pennsylvania now at over 25% reporting in. Kamala with 1,049,000 votes. Donald Trump at 80, or 836,000. He's, actually, he's closing the gap. Now we're about 200,000 apart. Can he do it? I really feel like that's the race people are going to watch quite a bit. Where's that going to go? I don't know what the talking heads that get paid to analyze this shit are saying on social media. I'm just sitting around waiting. I think the important thing we all know is that Bernie won, and now he has a new summer home. Right, so congratulations to Bernie Sanders on a brand new summer home. You did it again, boyo. You did it again. Oh, can we find it? Can we find it somewhere in here? A Yeezys? Somebody has made a Yeezy has won the country. Congratulate. Fantastic. Love it. Somebody saying that Wisconsin and Michigan just went to even chances on the New York Times needle. I forgot New York Times had a needle. I forgot about their little, their, their fucking little live cast. Can I find that? Where on their dumb little website is that? I bet you the moment I go to look at this fucking needle thing, it's going to bombard me with that bullshit where it's like, you can't look at anything. Sorry. You need to sign up. We're not going to let you read the needle. The live outcome of the race right now, compared to what New York Times is predicting for their forecast for the entire thing, it's leaning Trump with a 69% chance of victory, according to the New York Times needle. And their estimate for the Electoral College is Donald Trump sitting at 287, compared to Harris's 251. That is what they're sitting on. Now, whether you believe that or not, I don't know what to tell you. But I guess I guess we're going to have to wait around and watch and see. See which way it goes, chat. Somebody saying Neil's at 69% for Trump. I'm looking at it right now. Oh, 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 it did drop a little bit. Okay, well, it's now sitting at 69% chance of winning. Again, 287 to 251 is what they're calling it. With a ridiculously large fucking margin below it since it's still early days. But we're not a toss-up anymore. New York Times is saying they think it's going to go to Trump. Now, I can't remember in 2020 around this time, because we're about, let's say, three hours into it, what New York Times had predicted when it came down to Trump and Biden. Does anybody remember that? Where were they swinging it then? Were they already calling it and leaning it towards Biden, or was it still pretty much a toss-up? 69, everybody's loving it. Of course, why wouldn't we? Absolute banger, you are correct, dude. Started at 51 for Trump, already working its way up to 69. Well, yeah. Jeb is 200 points ahead. That's potentially true. Somebody saying, same shit happened in 2020. It was uh, it was looking Trump until 4 a.m. Oh, I forgot. How could I forget about the 3 a.m. ballot drop? <laughs> Trump is winning, and then here comes 3 a.m., and suddenly he's lost. Oops, so sorry. We found 480 bajillion votes. It looks like Joe Biden is the most popular man to walk the earth. Yes, he has pooped himself in front of the Pope. What can you do? That's he's, that's how he curried favor. That's how he got those votes, folks. Jeb always wins. Are we going to have a 3 a.m. dump? I won't be around to tell you if we do or not. Like I said, this is a short stream, one to two hours. We're already getting towards the end of it. I just don't have the energy or the health to do a long one for you. I'd love to sit around to hang out late this evening and um, watch as the dump trucks miraculously appear to, hey, we found all these Kamala votes, but I won't be able to do it. I'll have to wait until morning uh, and just wake up in my little turtle shell and crawl out of my little, uh, <laughs> my little like, aquarium. I don't where you keep turtles. What do you keep turtles in? Whatever the fuck it is. I was going to say gazebo. I don't know why you'd keep a turtle in a gazebo. The thing would escape. To find out, uh, is Donald Trump won? And are we getting Project 2025? We're all going to go fashy about this? Or is Kamala one? And am I going to have to start wearing a dress and put on some lipstick? And talk about my vagina. My, my vagina. I don't know. I'm not 100% certain. 
has anybody actually produced a video of what they think it's going to be like living under Kamala Harris? Is there, is there like a nice dystopian Kamala Harris video out there? Let me see if I can find one here. Put on a little entertainment for a moment. Uh, let's see. Kamala Harris victory? Would that be what we're looking for? Are they just, it's going to be a lot of sex jokes? Is that what we're, is that what we're looking at? It's going to be a lot of putting her head down. What did her husband say? Kamala's done what she's always done. She just put her head down and got to work. Oof. A little, a little oof. No, no, there's, ah, oh, I thought there'd be, I thought there'd be, a, no, there's, there's, there's no, there's some, God, that also, you know, I, I think it's really indicative of Harris's, like, actual support, her base level. There's not a lot of media that's really been created for her. Like, if you look it up, when I look up, like, Harris or Trump, I'll get stuff for, for Biden, and I'll get stuff for Trump, but I don't, um, I don't see shit for Kamala. There's, like, there's nothing popping up. Uh-oh. Bad news, boys. The NYT move, or a needle has moved a little bit. Went from 69% to 68%. It dropped 8%. Now they sell the electoral, uh, you know, 286 to 252. It's starting to move back. We don't like that. Oh, God, we're all going to have to dress up like women now. Kamala is slowly retching it away from us. What's going on here? Is the gap growing? In Pennsylvania, where is it, where are we seeing, where is the trouble coming from? So far for Kamala, we have leaning Colorado, Kansas, Missouri, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, New Hampshire. These are all the same. Trump still has Maine, Virginia, North Carolina, Georgia, New Mexico, and Minnesota. Waiting for the next hour to pop up. Four more states are going to pop up. Maybe get a little more information. A little more on the Senate, perhaps. A little more on the House. But as far as the president, still locked in at 178 to 99. I don't know, 68% moving down a little bit. Don't like to see the, the fucking needle move. It's getting a little spooky. Chat, you need to get your energy up. All right? Or it's over. You'll be forced to work extra hours. This is what I've been told. If pro you know Trump wins, it's Project 2025 and forced impregnations are going to happen. And if Kamala wins, all your tax money is going to be you know to um, fund nonstop abortions. No babies will be allowed to be born in this country. Under Kamala, everybody has to get an abortion immediately after having sex. And all your tax dollars are going to go to fund that. That's how it works. So we're either we're either killing the little babies or we're breeding them against their will. All right, that's, that's your two choices. This is what I've been told by social media and all the political pundits that are on Twitter right now. So I, I don't know what to tell you. Uh, somebody's saying scroll down to see state by state. I do see that. But the the problem is I couldn't give you the deep political insight that you would need for me to make it worthwhile. Like if I went county by county, I don't know which counties are really the ones to look at. That's the problem. And I, I know there are ones that are like very predictive of which way they think things are going to go. Uh, but I don't know any of those. Let's see what we got from the New York Post. Democratic strategist James Carville breaks silence on election chances. Let me turn the audio on on this. We can take a listen to it. Seems he's not super, super happy here. Uh-oh. Let's see what he has to say. Washington, uh, I think Biden was like 62 in 2020. I'm seeing 57, 58 right now. Uh, th there are troubling signs out there. But we got a big boat coming out of Philadelphia. Let's just wait a second. Let's see what happens in North Carolina and Georgia. But I would be less than honest if I didn't say the early indications here are not sterling. So he does not seem to be a happy camper. Not not depressed, not uh, living in despair, but apparently not doing very well. Uh-oh. Terrible. Terrible. Horrible. <laughs> I'm with James Carville, so I don't 100% know which way to go with it. I'm not 100% certain what to say. Let's see. We've got more information. Kanye West still holding on to that 14-state lead. All uh, just amazed by his ability. Somebody saying results are in turn on CNN. Looks like, oh my God, 47th president of the United States has been announced. Philip Burnell has taken it. 
Philip Burnell is the next president of the United. I don't know how he took it from Kanye, but apparently he did. Getting in there, surprising people. <laughs> oh, it's just a goofy shit. Come on. Come on. I feel like that, that, that picture of the FBI agent poking somebody with a stick saying, do something. That's how I feel with this fucking election right now. Do something. Somebody do something. Be entertaining. Somebody f spaz the fuck out in the streets. I want to see women crying or dudes shitting themselves. Let's get some. Let's get some fucking energy in, infused in here. I don't want to sit around watching a needle tick away one percent this way and one percent that way. We need to come up with like a speed voting system in this country, which is like you got five seconds to make up your fucking mind. Go. <laughs> if you miss that five second window, you're fucking done. Sorry. Get out of here. It's over. It's like nobody, one of the interesting things is everybody's being so, they're all walking on fucking eggshells. I've noticed this a lot of both sides. Nobody wants to just say, yeah, we fucking, we won this shit. We took it. Everybody's being so careful. Maybe they don't want to get embarrassed. If you remember Nate Silver, uh, back, what was the name of his website? 538 or whatever it was. Back in 2016, when it was uh, Clinton and it was Trump going against one another, he made all these predictions that Hillary was going to win. It was like 90% her and uh, girl boss, bitch energy, right? Slay, queen, slay. He bet his whole reputation on this. And he got blown out so bad, it made him lose all his hair. Like, if you look at pictures of him by the end of that evening, his hair had disappeared. Poor, poor Nate was just bald as shit. Because he was the only one to really be like, yeah, she's boss bitch. So maybe everybody's like really worried they're going to wear wigs at the end of this shit. So nobody just wants to say one way or the other. They don't want to give Jimmy an answer. They don't want to be able to say, hey, it's going to go this way so I can wrap a nice little bow tie on this bitch. And be like, hey, there you go. There you go before I, I pop you off somewhere else. Hey, there, there you are. There you are. Oh, no. Can't do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, as I said, this is a, a much shorter stream. I, I just wanted to get an idea of where it's leaning. Again, my prediction at the very beginning of this was it was going to be Trump. That's honestly what I believe. I still think he's going to win it. Uh, you know, will that play out? Is Pennsylvania going to go for him? Is he going to get the states that are leaning towards him? I couldn't tell you 100% because it's so fucking early. If you're going to watch this tonight, you're going to be watching. I'm just going to guess till 1 or 2 in the morning before you really have a solid enough answer to be like, yep, that's the person that won it. So it's going to be watching 8 to 10 key states, waiting for them to come in with the information because it's got to be, you know, those 8 to 10. That, that has to be them. Can't be, can't be any other. We got to wait on these fuckers before you really have an idea of which way it's going to go. If you went by what's being put up right now, uh, you know, f as far as predictions go from the New York times, their little needle of truth, it's back up to 69%. Trump actually raised it again. They're saying they think it's going to go for him. They think it's going to end the evening with 286 electoral votes to Harris's 252. That's that's where it's headed. Now, the question is, <laughs> the question is, where are you headed? Where are we going to send people? Off to a new land? Off to a different website entirely? Would I do that? I can't really actually do that, I don't think. I can hear them screaming, though. I can hear them screaming. <laughs> is they're watching? Okay, well, they're... Now, if you want to watch the Young Turks shit itself in rage, apparently over on the Kino Casino Gaming, they're currently watching that happen. So I'm going to put up a link to tell you. Oh, actually, can I just show it on screen? Maybe I can. Let me see if I'm clever enough to do this. Hold on. Hold on. Chat. Chat. Hold on one second. Actually, I don't know what happens if we do that. And then we do... No, I just don't want to full... Okay, you know... Oh, no, I can I do that? Boom. Boom, I did it. All right. Uh, thank you for everybody that came out. Uh, sorry, I didn't get a chance to go over a, a ton of the Super Chats. Like I said, it's a health-permitting kind of thing. I got about an hour or two in me, and we've hit about the end of the second hour. I thank you for everybody that donated or bought a hat and a mug, which you should buy two more of them. Okay, thank you. I hope you enjoy your election night. Remember, it doesn't matter who wins exactly. You should just catalog the salt. Screen cap it. And then enjoy people shedding themselves. That's really what we're going for here. Just really rub it in. 
tomorrow morning. Okay, you just you, this, this is half the fun of an election. Personally, if I'm being honest, all jokes aside, I hope Donald takes it. I don't think Kamala Harris put out any platform policies, planks, whatever you want to call them, that really appealed to anybody or addressed any of the issues that are going on. She has been part of the party and the administration that has been in power now for the last four years. And if she was going to accomplish some of the things she said, she would have done it by now. Her party would have done it by now. Biden would have done it by now. They would have addressed the issues with the economy, with the jobs market, instead of revising those numbers down every month, every fucking month. They would have dealt with the immigration issue, as the borders are, even though Biden threw under the bus to dodge that bullet, believe me, she still was the border czar, and she didn't really do anything. Now, does Trump have all the answers? Obviously not. But I at least feel like he tried to fucking address them, or at least speak to some of the issues that are actually going on right now. I feel like I've got something to grab onto. And also, they tried to shoot the motherfucker. Let's not forget that. You know, it kind of blows my mind that he was, you know, multiple assassination attempts, and everybody just kind of moved on like, oh, yeah, that happened. They tried to kill his ass, and he just got up and kept walking. So, I mean, you know, that's such bull moose energy. How can I not want to vote for that? How could I not want to see him win? So, I hope he takes it. Um, I feel like it'd be a more stable four years under him than it would be under uh, Kamala, because I feel like she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing. Head in the clouds, without any real policies to speak of, uh, probably easily manipulated by who knows who. But which way it's going to go this evening, I could not tell you. Either way, I know people are going to be super fucking mad tomorrow morning. Now, as far as who you can go watch, because I can't link you directly over to them, I could put them up on screen, though, for a minute. Oh, look at those boys over on Kick.com. That's Kino Casino Gaming. Don't need an account to watch them. You can just go watch them. It's Andy Worski and PPP, and I think they're having multiple other guests. I think I see Josh there from Mad at the Internet. Phil Bernal is going to come on. It looks like there are other guests as well. I think that's a Ghostbusters dude they had on before. So if you want to swing over there, that's kick.com. And the account name is Kino Casino Gaming, where they will be covering the election all night long. I mean, it's either that or you're watching Tim Pool in the quartering sell you coffee. I don't know. Now, I know it's weird. Two Canadians talking about the U.S. election. I think Josh is in fucking Uzbekistan. I don't know where he is. <laughs> I might be the only American talking about the American election tonight. Whatever, it doesn't matter. I, well, no, DSP is in the U.S., and I think he's he's watching. But they're currently shitting on the Young Turks. Again, that's Keto Casino Gaming over on Kick.com. Go watch their election coverage. I hope you have a good evening. As for me, I'm going to go lay down in my little turtle shell. And wait for that New York Times needle to move a little bit more. Hopefully when I wake up tomorrow, we're living in a country that's going to let me seed people against their will under Project 2025, the ultimate neo-Nazi policy by Donald Trump. Oh, evil days are ahead. Evil days are coming. <laughs> the goofiest shit. The goofiest shit. Have a good one, chat. Enjoy your election coverage. Have a fun night. Get drunk. Laugh. Screen cap shit, and hopefully we wake up in the morning or tomorrow where it's a little more hopeful and things feel like we've got some leadership at the wheel that's actually going to address some of the shit going on that needs to get fixed. Otherwise, we're all totally fucked. Have a good one. Oh, you know what? What's my outro song? What's my outro song? Yeah, I got my big spiel. I got my little, my little, my little thing going here, and I don't even have an outro song. I, I don't know if this is any good. Is this good? Let me see if I can find a good one here. Hold on. Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, chat. Oh, my God. The old boomer fucked it up. How does that? Just, everything's going great, and then he fucked it up. Somebody, somebody pick. Oh, you know what? I, I know what I'm going to go with. Fuck. Let's go with a classic. It's not really election related but it's a goodie it's a good it's an oldie it's a goodie we'll let this play us out again over on kick.com keto casino gaming or maybe find another stream whatever but enjoy your election night and i will see you when i see you and let us uh, go out to the dulcet tones of the aboriginals of australia with an important message Brothers, sisters,
Show me sister, show me brother 